Hey, Ryan's here. In this video, I present a streamlined approach to managing monthly and annual subscription payments within a web application. I recently refined the subscription-related code in my app, Increaser, a Next.js application supported by a Node.js server. Through this journey, I identified several components that could be valuable if you are building your own subscription management system. While the Increaser codebase remains private, I'll showcase essential code snippets here and in the blog post. Additionally, my public React Kit repository houses a comprehensive collection of reusable components, hooks, and utilities. While I currently employ Paddle for payment processing in Increaser, the design is adaptable, making it easy to transition to Stripe or other payment platforms. Starting with the front end, our primary goal is to ascertain whether a user has permission to access the premium features. In Increaser, this determination hinges on three criteria. The user secured lifetime access via an AppSumo promotion, the user is currently enjoying a free trial period, or the user maintains an ongoing subscription. To efficiently evaluate this criteria, we utilize the use is like member hook. The result from this hook tells us if a user is eligible to access the premium functionalities. We opted for the name use is like member over uses member to more accurately depict the status of users on a free trial. While these users can fully engage with premium features similarly to actual members, they aren't technically labeled as such. As an illustration, in Increaser, while free trial participants can harness all premium tools, they aren't granted entry to our exclusive Telegram group reserved for paying members. To figure out if a user is on free trial, we employ the use has free trial hook. This hook fetches the timestamp from the user state and measures it against the present time. We obtain the current time using the use rhythmic re-render hook which prompts a re-render every minute. Both the inner working of this hook and the convert duration utility are available in the React repository. This mechanism enables us to dynamically assess a user's trial status, ensuring that the interface precisely showcases their present access rights in real time. Within the use has active subscription hook, we return false if the user's state lacks a subscription field or if the said subscription is not active. A pivotal element in subscription management is the ends at attribute. For a recurrent subscription, this field isn't present. But when a user decides to cancel, we update the ends at field indicating the subscription's expiration date. The foundation of all these hooks is the use assert user state hook, which raises an error when the user state is absent. But in the context of Increaser, this here never surfaces. We've put in measures to ensure the app's content doesn't render until the required user state is available. The addition of the user state only component facilitates controlling content rendering based on the availability of the user state. Think of it as a sentinel. If the ask session is absent from the local search, it promptly redirects the user. By enclosing the content of a page within the user state only component, you can ensure controlled rendering. For instance, on the increaser's homepage, this setup guarantees the content is visible only when the necessary user state is in place. Upon refreshing the app, content materializes instantly, giving an impression of lightning fast loading. This swift display is realized by caching the user state in local storage. If you're curious about the nitty gritty of this implementation, delve into the video here. Here's a tangible use case of this hooks in action. Imagine a feature reserved solely for members, like initiating a focus session. This function is neatly wrapped inside the member-only action component. This component access an action problem, which gets called only if the user aligns with a member profile, and a rendering function that sprints a model loaded with a subscription form for a non-member. This setup ensures each user experience the future according to their privilege type. The member-only action component is elegantly designed for simplicity. If a user resembles a member, the render function gets invoked with the action prop. Conversely, if they don't, the render function provides a callback to unveil the subscription prompt. Augmenting this component, we have the opener abstract component sourced from React. The subscription prompt component is multi-stage. It first showcases an offer to the user. Upon acceptance, it progresses to reveal a checkout model. Instead of leaning on the traditional switch case architecture, we harness the power of the match component from React Kit to render varying models based on each stage. 
for those keen on crafting a resilient model component, consider diving into this video. The subscription billing cycle provider is utilized to manage the state of the selected billing period, allowing us to avoid probe drilling between components. Some developers might regard this provider as excessive, but it resonates with my inclination towards neater components with fewer props. Let's dive into the subscription offer component. This component is divided into two main sections. The price-related content, which is shown only after it's loaded, and a list showcasing the benefits of membership. The subscription prices query dependent component plays a crucial role in loading the prices. This component is a part of the Paddle Classic UI package within my monorepo, highlighting its specific design for Paddle integration. If I decide to switch to a different payment provider in the future, I can easily create an analogous component inside a corresponding package, like Stripe UI ensuring modularity and ease of integration. The query dependent component offers a streamlined solution for rendering content based on the state of a rare query. When data is loading, a central spinner provides a visual feedback. If any issue arises, an informative error message is presented. On successful data retrieval, both the subscription billing cycle input and subscription price components come into view granting users a selection of subscription options. By introducing this abstraction, the AI becomes dynamically responsive, ensuring users experience content tailored to each stage of the data fetching journey, enhancing overall user interaction. The subscription billing cycle input component harmoniously merges the functionalities of the switch and tag component. The switch component sourced from ReactKit facilitates the alternation between monthly and yearly billing choices. Complementing this, the tag component vividly illustrates the percentage of savings a user gains when choosing the yearly billing option. This not only boosts clarity but also nudges users toward the yearly billing cycle, highlighting its financial advantage. The subscription price component is meticulously designed to always present the monthly rate even when referencing an annual subscription. This approach accentuates the annual option cost effectiveness. To maintain transparency and clarity, the total annual price is also displayed, albeit in a subtle font when users choose the annual subscription. Importantly, the visibility property is employed rather than removing the element from the DOM. This method ensures fluid transitions and a consistent aesthetic when users alternate between billing options. Furthermore, to heighten the visual allure and perceived savings, the annual price is intentionally set such that its monthly equivalent ends in 0.99. For example, an annual fee of $47.88 breaks down to a neat monthly rate of $3.99. The final segment of the subscription offer component is dedicated to membership benefits list. This component systematically outlines the various advantages that come with a subscription. The subscription checkout component streamlines the user experience through a multi-stage process. Initially, users are presented with the Paddle checkout embedded within an iframe. After a successful transaction, the component proceeds to fetch the checkout ID, which is crucial for creating the subscription ID. In the final stage, the component synchronizes the subscription within the app, making the conclusion of the process. The Paddle model component acts as a wrapper for the model component, but with a mandatory light theme. This choice stems from a desire for visual consistency with Paddle default light checkout theme. Even though Paddle offers theme customization, the default light theme typically appears more visually appealing and user-friendly. Therefore, maintaining a uniform light-themed model for all Paddle interactions ensures a harmonious user experience. Flow component provides a streamlined, adaptable, and intuitive method for overseeing various stages of steps in a user process. Each stage is encapsulated with an object that contains several fields, with the ID field being mandatory. Rendering functions are passed as step, which is explicitly typed based on its ID, enhancing type safety and allowing for precise handling of diverse stages. This setup centralizes the state, offering a cohesive and easily manageable strategy for directing intricate multi-stage user interactions. The Paddle iframe component is crafted to offer a smooth checkout journey. By auto-filling an email and forwarding the user's ID to the Paddle system, the transition becomes both faster and more straightforward, elevating the user's experience. The on-success callback triggers when the checkout concludes, 
and the on-close callback gives users a way out, ensuring they maintain control and flexibility throughout the process. The query subscription ID component retrieves the subscription ID based on the checkout ID from Paddle. When this is done, it triggers the on success callback. Given that we can experience either a loading or an error state, the blocking query component is rendered to handle these scenarios. The use on query success hook is a straightforward wrapper over use effect. It triggers the callback as soon as the data becomes available. When faced with only two potential states, a loading or error, the blocking query component comes into play. It displays a prominent spinner during loading. If an error occurs, it presents the error message alongside a support email for further assistance. The sync subscription component follows a similar pattern to the query subscription ID component. However, it queries the API for subscription data. When the data is retrieved, it synchronizes with the user state and then triggers the on finish callback. Increaser utilizes a GraphQL API. For those keen on understanding type generation within a monorepo context, consider checking this video. Shortly, we'll delve into the server-side implementation of the subscription query. After a user purchases a subscription, it's a thoughtful gesture to express gratitude. For this reason, the membership confirmation component is embedded within the root app component to convey a thank you message. While well, I have plans to introduce a welcome video in the model soon, currently it showcases text along with my contact information. To decide when to display this component, we monitor the output from the use is pain user hook. When the status transitions from false to true, the model appears. Importantly, since we hinge on the is pain user state rather than the subscription field, this model will also pop up should a user opt for a lifetime deal, should we offer one in the future. The use effect on dependency change is a hook that brings an additional layer of specificity to the standard use effect by ensuring that the side effect is only executed when the provided dependencies actually change values. The final step for our front-end process is to display subscription details, enabling users to update billing information or terminate the subscription. This functionality resides in the membership overview component. The managed subscription component displays content only when the subscription field exists and it hasn't expired. If the ends at field indicates a future date, we inform the user about the specific end date of their subscription. In cases where there's a payment issue and the status is past due, we prompt the user to update their payment method. Otherwise, when everything is in order, we showcase the next billing date along with the buttons to manage the subscription. Manage subscription actions component displays the buttons that allow users to update or cancel their subscription. It employs the use manage subscription query hook to retrieve the URLs from the Puddle checkout. The checkout process is managed by the Puddle iframe component. Upon completion, the on success callback is triggered. With the subscription ID at our disposal, we can then synchronize it with the user state and close the model. Having completed the front end, let's now shift our focus to the server side. The primary task is to determine the essential data required to represent a subscription in our database. We needn't concern ourselves with the data format received from the payment provider as our main focus should be on our internal representation. We can always manage format conversions as needed. For my project increaser, I decided to store provider. This represents the name of the payment provider. I anticipate migrating from Paddle Classic to Paddle in the future, which is why I've included this. You might not need this field for your application immediately. If required, you can always run a migration later to add it to existing subscriptions. ID, this is the subscription ID as provided by the payment system. Plan ID represents the ID of the plan within the payments provider system. Status, for increaser, this can either be active or past due. We infer the console state from the answered field. Next build add, this is a time step indicating the next billing date. It will remain undefined for a canceled subscription. And add is a timestamp marking the end date of the subscription. It remains undefined for an active subscription. You might be wondering, what if we need to add another field to our subscription from the payment provider in the future and they haven't stored it yet? This is where the sync command becomes invaluable. Whenever we depend on external systems, it's essential to have a mechanism 
to synchronize the data. There is always a possibility that issues might arise in our observers or webhooks necessitating a method to replenish missing data. For the increaser platform, I've implemented a sync subscription command. This command takes a plan ID, retrieves all the associated subscriptions, transforms them into our internal subscription type, and then updates our database accordingly. Paddle Classic doesn't provide an SDK or type definitions, making direct interactions with the API a bit cumbersome. To streamline the process, I've created a function called query Paddle. This function accepts an endpoint and an optional payload. When called, it performs a fetch operation and return the parse JSON. The beauty of query Paddle is that it abstracts away the need to specify the base URL, content type, and authorization header every time we want to communicate with the Paddle API. This not only makes the code cleaner, but also simplifies the querying process. Changes to a subscription don't solely originate from our app. User might cancel their subscription or make alternation directly in the payment system. As a result, we need a way to stay updated with all such modifications. To achieve this, we listen to those changes by using webhooks. When we receive a webhook, we need to ensure it's one of the events we are interested in. We handle events such as a subscription creation, updates, cancellation, and various payment-related alerts. Once we confirm the event type, we process the relevant data, extract the subscription details, and update our database accordingly. This mechanism ensures our system remains in sync with the payment provider, reflecting accurate subscription statuses for our users. The GraphQL API represents the last integral component of our subscription system. Even so, we retrieve the subscription detail from our database using the user state query, it's also essential to incorporate both managed subscription and subscription queries. The managed subscription query is crucial because the URLs it returns aren't static and may evolve over time. Instead of hard coding or caching these URLs, it's more efficient and reliable to query them in real time when required. This ensures that users always get accurate and functional URLs to manage their subscriptions. This query essentially acts as a bridge to the subscription user's endpoint of the Paddle Classic API. Upon invocation, it first verifies the user's identity and checks for their subscription details in the code base. Once confirmed, it queries the Paddle Classic API for the specific user's subscription URLs. Finally, it returns the cancellation and update URLs, allowing the user to easily manage their subscription directly from our application. The subscription query plays a distinct role compared to the user state query. While the latter simply fetches the subscription data from our database, the former takes an extra crucial step. It communicates with the payment provider to obtain the latest subscription details, then synchronizes the data with our user records in the database. The reason behind this dual action approach is practicality. Webhooks so effective can introduce a time lag, possibly leading to outdated or unsynchronized data. For instance, consider a scenario where a user completes a checkout process or decides to cancel their subscription. It's vital for the user experience to immediately reflect these changes. By using the subscription query, our system ensures that it always displays the most recent subscription status, bridging any potential time gaps between the payments provider's certifications and our system's record. That's all. If you found this subscription breakdown useful, please like and subscribe. Become an effective 10x programmer with my productivity app at increaser.org.